a right call, but we've never seen that before with the Knicks. No. Losing on a goaltend with .4 to go. I mean, you, 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 know, you acknowledge the effort by Alonzo Trier wanting to defend that shot. You watch the trajectory and you think if he doesn't touch it, it probably hits the back rim and bounces out. But that's easy for us to say watching a replay. But it's about only scoring 11 points. I mean, 24 points that, that the Wizards scored, I think the defense was decent enough. But 11 points, all of a sudden you have three great quarters, and Swin, it's exactly what David Fisdale has talked about so many nights, and he'll probably say it again tonight. And that is that there's always one quarter in every game (laughs) that they cannot play these complete games, and this one quarter happened to be the fourth. And the thing with this uh, team, and especially being a young team, is that you're going to have to live with some of those quarters not being as, uh, as successful or as productive. But you still had an opportunity to win with your defense. And so to give an opportunity like that, you put your squad that's out there, it really comes down to the execution and communication. For me, looking at this, there was a lack of communication at the top on this the pick to get Bill open in the first place. Mm -hmm. We knew the ball was going to go to him. And so when you put yourself in position to at least try to win the game, you hope that your guys will communicate and come up with plays like that. That's how you get better. You learn as the season goes on. But this one is a tough one for the fans to follow on Twitter. It's a tough one for us to take right now. But I guarantee you when they watch the film, they're going to see a lot of things they could have done differently to win this game. All right. Knicks only with 11 points in the fourth quarter. But they did have the lead by one as we take you – to that last sequence, and here it is, Allen and Swin. Now you see Beal is way off. Like, he's in the backcourt. There's the screen set on Tim Hardaway Jr. And there's the problem, too, is that Bryant just gets wide open because both players stay uh, well, with Beal. Yeah, well, the problem was the first initial pick on Beal, there was miscommunication. So you had Tim Hardaway there's a and Bonley who, who stayed at the top. But you're going to see that block. And listen, Alonzo Trier, that's a, an athlete's reaction. I, I actually think that wasn't mad that he tried to block it because that's your oh, initial of reaction, of course, to yeah. try to go after Make your it. Effort. But the problem is he had to come from the corner to do that. If you have good communication at the top, if you're going to switch or if you're going to shade to Bradley Bill, somebody has to take the roller. Yeah. When you don't communicate, that's when immediately it's broken down and give a lot of credit to Bill because he could have decided, I'm going to take this shot. Mm-hmm. He could have been a little bit selfish. But when you see the open player, you find them, and then you're able to have success like this. Now, you have players like Alonzo Trier on the court, Tim Hardaway Jr. on the court, some of your better defensive players, of Frank Nielakina, Damian Dotson on the bench. So David Fisdale wanted to stick with the players that he had playing late in that game, but you're seeing the breakdown right there, and it's a learning moment for maybe somebody like an Alonzo Trier, Kevin Knox on the court uh, certainly as well. But it's the right call. You see the ball on its way down right before it's hit. And it's a heartbreaker, but we'll look at this one play, but we all know this thing broke down with, I think, too much isolation play, not enough passing, all of a sudden in the fourth quarter. The offense really fell apart in the fourth quarter. You know, the thing is, the Knicks played a great three quarters. They were up by double digits after one. They were up by 19 in the second quarter. They led by 10 at the half, and a lot of that had to do just winning the first half because they shot so well from downtown. Nine of 18 from downtown for the Knicks in the first half. Oh, yeah, they came out on fire, and of course, they were knocking down the threes, and you love to see them be able to get those threes up, but we knew that eventually... The Wizards will make a run, but you see right here, Luke Cornett, he set the tone for them in the first quarter. I mean, in the first quarter alone, he had, what, 14 points? He looked very comfortable. Is this a good shooting, Jim? You shot in this, Jim. You know, it wasn't that good shooting for me, but I tell you one thing, (laughs) I wish I had Luke Cornett's vision out there. (laughs) But it wasn't just him. It was Dotson as well, Trier. Like, all those guys were getting involved, but they were moving the basketball. You talked about too much isolation. Oh, yeah. Whenever you get tired as a player, a lot of times you can't just go back to what are those old bad habits because Coach Fisdale has talked about this. We can't go to isolation. The ball has to find an open man. When they're playing well and they're competing and staying with teams, that's when they're playing their best. When we get to the fourth quarter, and we're going to see that here in a little bit, it was spread out, everyone standing on the three-point line, and then who's going to be able to penetrate? That's the easiest thing to defend, the easiest thing to defend. Seven minutes into that fourth quarter, the Knicks had two points. We're going through the record book saying, what's the worst, uh, worst fourth quarter ever? Right. Uh, yeah. It's eight points, and for a while they were flirting with that. They finished with 11, but they just, again, in the final 12 minutes, whatever was working there for the first three quarters, they, they couldn't get Four done. Four of 14. So you missed 10, 10 shots from the field, a couple of turnovers, a couple of drives that you saw that just were going nowhere. But it was just like what Swin said, a lot, way too much, I think, one-on-one. And maybe you credit what the Wizards did defensively, but it just felt like the game suddenly slowed down to a point where the Knicks weren't moving the ball as comfortably as they were early in the game. They looked terrific for three quarters. I mean, the three-point shooting was off the charts for them, 
but it was also because they were kicking the ball out, you were catching in rhythm, this was a lot more standing around. It wasn't, it, it just, it, this was not by design whatsoever. That's a little soft there, probably hand down, man down right there, Swin, right? When it's Bradley Beal, you know he's shooting again. Those are just open looks from the top. This is the defense now we're showing. KYP, know your personnel. <laughs> You'll finish your with 26, 26 points for Beal in the game. Yeah, you have to know who the shooters are. And and what I what Porter I liked about 20. this team, yeah, Porter was getting off. He went for 20 as well. Whether it was off the bounce, coming out, shooting comfortably for three. When the Knicks were at their best, they were getting into players, like that. making them have to get to the basket. But once you get comfortable, and we talked about it in the pregame, once Bill gets comfortable, he's going to start rolling. See, they, they, play, that's they the went, play again, boy. You watched so that a second and time. And you're saying that the, the, the issue here is the focus on Bill. No one was paying attention to Bryant. Well, Von, Von Lee obviously left, left Bryant to help out. You know, you, you see, because Tim got hit pretty hard on that screen. Like, that was like a slingshot kind of play. Mm -hmm. That's like, we, you see this in hockey a lot, that slingshot on power plays where it's the, the, the guy skates up fast and they drop the puck and then he flies into the zone with speed. Beal was coming in with speed. They set the screen and he would be able to walk into a three. Vonley read it. And so he jumps off, but then Brian, to his credit, just keeps going to the basket and no one, everybody just stuck to their guy. Like, my guy's not going <laughs> to score. But he's in the middle of the paint for an easy two. Very simple fix. When you're in that huddle, the coach tells you right away, if there's a screen, whether that's on Bill or whoever, if you're switching, if you're shading to that side, you already know what the defensive assignment is. It's not about only the effort. He was coming down. Bill was coming down really fast. It's also the communication verbally because you're screaming sure. immediately, switch, switch. Mm -hmm. If you're the guy whose uh, player is setting the screen, you're dictating to the guard what you're going to do. So if I say switch, I immediately am taking Bill. That means that lets Tim Hardaway know. And we don't know here if, the, if any communication was said, but it just looked like they weren't on the same page. Right. And that's what you cannot have happen with two veterans on your team. Right. Tim would have to then, I mean, he took a hard screen, but he would have to recover and chase Bryant, which he didn't. He went to Beal, leaving Bryant open in the paint.